right, all right. Ready to get them started. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to start here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get the theme music going. That's crazy. Okay. Those of us that indulge in or commit intellectual violence don't do so for the pleasure of mental masturbation or ego dipping. We do so because the chains of oppression on our people's minds are deep and difficult to remove. my children of the sun welcome to the open eye on WHGE 95.3 FM I am your third eye optometrist Patrice Gibbs ready to open your eye yes indeed ready to bring you the information that you need I know I know you couldn't wait until today don't worry I'm here all right all right turn that thing song back down what's up my brother Cedric good morning Sherry Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Way back to you. Who is that? It look like my cousin. That's my cousin, Michael Gibbs, over in Atlantic City, over in Jersey. What's up, Michael? All right, all right. Let's, um, you know what? I'm going to get right to it. Something that we need to understand, and that's the meaning of power and its use. The objective of power is to take transfer, maintain will, and expand power. Will means to have and to be able to use power and influence. What is power? Power is the ability to bring your aspirations to reality regardless of any opposing force trying to stop you. See, we have power, but we don't realize it. We don't understand its use. Just like we don't understand money. We don't understand its use. Okay? We, how can I say, we have bad priorities with money. Improper behavior. You think I give a damn how much your sneakers cost? You think the cops give a damn how much your sneakers cost? A matter of fact, they see rims on your car, they more likely to pull your ass over. Stop dealing with appearances and start dealing with goals. Understand power. Yeah, I got this from uh, Ryan Jones. Good morning, Bessie. How you doing, sister? One of my faves. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Look, I got this from Ryan Thomas. Okay, he said he was talking about race with a friend who happened to be white. And I told him that as a black person, we often enter situations distrusted and have to do so much more than the next person to establish trust. Simply because of the color of our skin. He said his white friend replied to him. Do you know why a lot of non-blacks are hesitant around black people? Because if they were you, they would have burned this nation down by now. And they don't know if today is the day you'll decide to do it. Mm. You know, it makes me think of the poem by Langston Hughes, Warning. It's a real short poem, check it out. Negroes, 
sweet and docile, meek and humble and kind. Beware the day they change their mind. When in the cotton fields, gentle breeze, beware the hour it uproots the trees. You get it? Langston Hughes, yes indeed. Yes, indeed. Good morning, Tracy. Right on time, because I'm going to quote you, sister. That's right. This was from my Facebook friend, Tracy Johnson. Check this out. If there is anyone in our community who doesn't have full understanding of the following, they are in need of a reality check. You do not have full citizenship in this country. I will repeat, you do not have full citizenship in this country. If you did have full citizenship in this country, you would not have to be worried about being treated differently by the police and judicial system based upon the color of your skin. However, it has been proven that black people receive unequal justice for the exact same offense that their white counterparts in this country, than the white counterparts in this country. If you have full citizenship, you would have the same access to business loans and better interest rates as white people and make the same amount of money as you do with the same credit score. However, it has been factually proven that banks such as Fifth Third Bank have been found guilty of charging different interest rates to black people versus white people. Google it. Google it yourself if you don't believe me. If you have full citizenship in this country, having a name that sounds black will not hinder you from getting interviews. However, multiple studies have found that when people with ethnic sounding names fill out a job application, they are more likely to be discarded. If you have full citizenship in this country, you would not have to be concerned about receiving relief from the federal government during a national disaster. However, history has shown us that if you live in a minority community, then relief is slower to come. Unfortunately, I could continue. How many of us are okay with not having full citizenship? How many of us are okay with only getting by and not rocking the boat. How many in our community perceive some of us as too extreme, too loud, and troublemakers who find it unacceptable that the country we live in does not extend full citizenship to black people? Why would anyone settle for being treated less than? Why would anyone be okay with leaving this legacy of oppression to our children and grandchildren and their children without trying to make some sort of change? Now it's from Sister Tracy Johnson, a queen that gives a damn. Yeah, that's right. What's up, Brother Vaughn? All right, all right. What? Hold on. Let me get something going here. Okay. The Open Eye is brought to you by Delaware Center for Homeless Vets, founders and builders of the Pearl Center, the veteran-specific uh, apartment building. Delaware Center for Homeless Vets has recently started a new program, uh, Grant and Perdue. This program is directly, specifically at women veterans. Delaware Center for Homeless Vets changing veterans' lives all over Delaware. Yes, respect, sister. Yes, indeed. That was a uh, great analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. WHGE 95.3 FM. I got some PSAs. I think I put one in my pocket here. Wait a minute. Did I? Yeah, I did. Wait a minute. I got it. 
I got the all right, all right. Yeah. Okay, this is a TSA here. Bring your own bag. That's today, October 23rd, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Faith Harvest Worship Center on Lancaster Avenue. Okay, they're giving away food and clothing, coach dresses, suits, shoes, children's clothing, free, and food, meats, breads, pasta, canned goods, box cereal. And there's a rule, you know, some places you go, uh, you know, the food might be expired or what have you, but they make sure at Faith Harvest Worship Center on Lancaster Avenue to get the freshest food they can to give away to people. Looks like they adopted that philosophy. We do not treat the poor poorly. That's right. So head on over there, take a bag. Yes, indeed. There's some things that you need. Oh, you know, there's a new dialing procedure in Delaware. Um, all consumers with numbers in the 302 area code as of October 24th, that's tomorrow, and also my little cousin's birthday, on and after this date, local calls dialed with only seven digits may not be completed, and a recording may inform you that your call cannot be completed. You got to dial the uh, 1302. All right, all right. All right, let's get back to us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the murder trial of what's his name? Mm -hmm. Aubrey, the guy that was shot in Texas. Somebody help me out over here. All right. Uh, there's trial and what have you is starting. You know, remember this. They didn't make arrest because they saw the tape. They made arrest because we saw the tape. If we hadn't seen it, it would have been business as usual. They'd have let that go. You know, one of the biggest tricks of white supremacy is to make naive blacks believe that their race isn't being exclusively targeted. Okay, did you hear that analysis that I just read from Sister Tracy Johnson? And it's all about economics and it's not really about color. This is named, uh, David Icke and that fool Alex Jones tell you that this white controlled government is just as dedicated to oppressing poor whites as they are black folks and that's totally false. Those female coffins were not for Becky and Biff. They're for Keisha and Leroy. White militias are not arming to the teeth to fight it out with a white supremacist government that empowers them. Don't be foolish. Those guns are for us. And we are on our own. Like Dr. Clark said, we have no friends. You want a friend, go look in the goddamn mirror. And that's where Brother Ray it goes, brother. You know, it's something that, and, and, and this bothers me to no end when I see us arguing about it. You know, we have so many different groups, you know, that argue about who we are and what color we are. And, you know, one of my favorite rappers, um, KRS One, in his song, My Philosophy. He said he brown from the boogie down. He ain't black. You know, and there's a brother that, you know, has spoken truth and knowledge to the community. Still big ups to you, brother. Black people cannot define what blackness is. Blackness will always be defined under a white supremacist system if we allow that. They'll never let anyone make the Go define who you are or tell you who you are. They want the term black to center around negative connotations. Anything positive that comes from the black community will be distorted and manipulated to appear and become negative. Hip-hop in the gangster rap or thug rap. 
Y'all don't understand the difference between thug rap and gangster rap. N.W.A., who is credited with, you know, really starting gangster rap, remember something about N.W.A. They were telling you what was going on in your community. Mapuka evolved into an over-sexualized dance, twerking. Black Lives Matter into a terrorist organization. Pro-black consciousness into black identity extremism. Black love into anti-whiteism. Self-love in the hate speech. See, a lot of people will tune into the open eye and consider what I do to be promoting hate speech. It's just that I'm so damn pro-black If you think I'm anti-white. And the reason for that is racism is so ingrained in America that any criticism of it makes many white people, not all, many white people think that you criticize it. No. If that shoe don't fit you, why you trying to squeeze your foot into it? Any attempt to redefine blackness will result in being silenced or taken out. White supremacy seeks to reinforce the negative stereotypes associated with blackness through controlling the image and definition of blackness. Something we can't allow. We have to control the image and definition of blackness. They have created stigmas around blackness so that whenever black is a prefix, it is instinctively seen as bad. Black men, black women, black children, black fathers, black neighborhood, black love, black heart, black revolution. And anything that, be, that can be twisted into a negative will be seen as not black. Anything that cannot be twisted into a negative will be seen as not black. Hey. That's why so many of our people will grasp on to being included in POC, people of color. When they say people of color, yo, hey, wake up. They are not talking about us. How many times I got to tell you that? When they say people of color, they talking about everybody but us. People in color, color pe people of color include what is that? One eye, one horn, yellow polka dot people eaters, and they don't like black people. Wake the hell up, damn. Hey. Tell you something. Now check it out. Poor people, especially those of color, <laughs> are worth nothing to corporations and private contractors if they are on the street. They don't mean people of color when 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 they make a statement like that. So you got you gotta you gotta listen to the words and how they mix stuff up. Those of color. No, black people are worth nothing to corporations and private contractors if they are in the, on the street. In jail and prisons, however, they can generate corporate revenues of thirty to forty thousand dollars a year each. And they can't get a goddamn job when they get out of jail. These are the people that we dealing with, see. Mm-hmm. This is the Open Eye on WHGE 95.3 FM. Yes, the, the education station. Oh, if you got the nerve, you can call me. Wait a minute. At 844 WHGE 953. Mm -hmm. 
I'm Patrice Gibbs, your third eye optometrist. Okay. Yeah, that's Fun All Day by Patrice Gibbs. Y'all know him? <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, uh, one of the things uh, uh, Tracy Johnson mentioned was that ethnic sounding name will block you from getting a job. You will not get called for an interview. I saw a white guy who was a manager in a company and his supervisor, he, I think they were, yeah, they were in HR. His supervisor came to him with a resume and I might've told you this story before that had a black sounding name on it. And he, and he read this resume and this person was obviously qualified. This late young lady was obviously qualified for the job. But he started making all these jokes about black stereotypes and why she would be problematic in their office. And then he balled up the resume and threw it away. You know, black sounding names trigger violent thoughts in white people's mind. Who was it? D.L. Hewley said the worst place a black person could live the most dangerous place as in a white person's imagination. A UCA, UCLA study surveyed over 1,500 mostly white people. Researchers found that whites are more likely to perceive people with black sounding names such as Jamal or Deshaun as more dangerous, violent, and physically large than people with stereotypically white sounding names such as Connor, Wyatt, or Garrett. Now, it shouldn't be a factor, of course, but damn, if you name your child Deshaun, Jamal, or like my niece's, niece's name is Desh Tashina, do you name your child something like that? Chris Rock said you might as well name a food stamp because they ain't going to get no goddamn job. The study also showed that a black male with no criminal history is viewed equally as negative as a white man convicted of, uh, of assault. The mostly white survey pool overwhelmingly identified as liberal and may not know they hold inaccurate prejudicial stereotypes about blacks. These biases allow whites to discriminate against blacks in all aspects of life. In the workplace, criminal justice system, even applications for, housings or for housing or loans. If a white person sees a black person as a threat, they will treat them as such. And you know, sometimes it's just, just that hatred because many white people have a zero... A zero-sum game mentality. Anything pro-black is deemed anti-white. For example, to them, black is beautiful means white is ugly. Peace, Brother Ron, over, over there. Brother Ron Gibbs, another one of my cousins. Black Lives Matters means 
White lives don't matter. In this case, loving to see black people prosper means loving to see white people fail. That's why they respond the way they do. Their zero-sum game mentality is the main reason, or one of the many reasons, actually, that is detrimental to our progress as black people. See, Excuse me. <clears throat> Political dissent and protests are not crimes. Neither are they terrorist activities to be monitored or put down by counterterrorism units. Nonetheless, the U.S. government has a long, well-documented history of using surveillance, monitoring, and the threat of coercive state force to intimidate and silence black-led movements for social justice and empowerment. The revelations of the FBI, the DHS, and local law enforcement surveillance of any of the movement for black lives leads us to fear that the current surveillance of any movement is more coordinated, extensive, and system systematic than has been revealed thus far, and that it is intended to silence the demands of black activists and related movements. That's where. And how do we know this to be so? Well, just consider this. The FBI has issued a report a couple of years ago declaring any black group protesting police brutality or racism are black identity extremists. Now, white terrorists murders over 50 people and injures Hundreds in the FBI's response is declared black protest terrorism. Any black people that dare complain about white supremacy is a black identity extremist. Black existence is now terrorism. We've been warned, watch the process, understand the propaganda. Joining me on the air, as always, my brother in consciousness, our Intellectual surgeon. Yeah, I got no Soroma. Good morning, brother. Yeah, I got How you doing? How you doing? It's your boy. I was listening to you coming in, man. How are you? Woo! <laughs> Yo, you woo! <laughs> Listen, woo! <laughs> Yo, boy, you smoked the radio up. Uh, you hear me? Uh, uh, you be setting it on fire, boy. I'm trying to. Yo, listen, what's good? Oh, Hello, oh, everyone. Man. I'm telling you. You know, <clears throat> this, this, identifying blacks who dare speak out against white supremacy, uh, uh, identifying blacks who do so as terrorists, right. this isn't new, not by a long shot. You know, and, uh, uh, probably the height of it was in the 60s and early 70s when um, the FBI and the police you know, murdered Malcolm, Martin, mm, 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 mm. my namesake, they were international in this. Mega Evers, Fred Hampton. You know, they still, to this day, okay, they do not want us to educate ourselves. Or our kids. Or our children. No, it is. It ain't even about educating ourselves anymore. We have to pass this legacy on down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. We ain't we we ain't really focusing on our generations to come as a, a black hole mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When we really should be focusing on humanity living all together, it's all these individual entities trying to say that they're the best. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When it should really be, okay, we went through this, we need to do this to make this better, and it, uh, oh, what is your contribute, what's your contribution to making our, this situation better mm -hmm. from this point on? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No one's talking like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the politicians, that, oh. I mean, that's why I continue to go on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We be sounding like a broken record talking to people. Mm -hmm. because this happens so much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, we got to break that broken record 
and then come up with solutions to make a new record, a remix. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. we, where's the remixes to what the, the future holds for us? Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Well, I tell you what, and I, I, I feel you. Because they treated like all, all the names that you said to me just now. Mm -hmm. They all were basically taken down the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They were treated period. like a terrorist organization, mm -hmm. and they got everyone that was involved. That was like a drug bus. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Really? Mm -hmm. So, and 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 they're not doing that for the, the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, how they're know. not doing that no. for you know all these other organizations, the the Nazi organizations and stuff like that, mm -hmm. going in there, getting everybody that's involved, locking them up or killing them. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I don't, I don't see the government doing that. Oh, hell no. Like they did it for all the people you yeah, just said. Man. That I just named. Right. You know? And that's ridiculous. That's that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's that's where it's at. That's where the core of it is. And mm -hmm. if we don't we who who can fight the government? Yeah. Fish. Well, you know everybody. The yeah. people if can the fight people the get government. together, go that's get the together answer. and do it. If you don't know the answer, you are the answer. You can fight the government. Mm -hmm. And we all stick together to make our calls go. They're trying to pass a bill that's uh, 2,000 pages long. Uh, that nobody read. Come on, man. You I mean, know? this is what they're doing. And on, inside of them 2,000 pages long, they saying, saying, you just read about them dudes going and being killed by the government. They're making that okay. Oh, yeah. them pages. Oh. And that's what I'm saying. That's, oh, yeah. Oh, I got something for you, too, on that. You, but first, I want to get to this, this though. I want to get to this. Okay. I ain't want to take you take it off. Oh no, no, no! You good? You good? You good? You good. That's we crazy, still in man. the vein and still in the in the in the right it's subject crazy, man. I, I, All yeah. right. And like I said, they don't want us to learn about that. You know something that has gone by the wayside what? long before the internet. And black bookstores. I can remember there were like three black bookstores here. Okay, and the. Chains, the big bookstore chains, like, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I forget the name of them, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Okay. I remember one was Encore and it moved downtown. Right. Okay, with their raceless ass. Woo! Yo, I bet. I'll be late with my beef. You fast, you fast, you Well, <laughs> one of the things that a lot of us don't know is that the FBI had a war on black own bookstores. Why would they have that? Why would why would it why would they Well in the spring of nineteen sixty eight okay FBI director J. Edgar Hoover announced to his agents that COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program established in nineteen fifty six to combat communists allegedly right. should focus on preventing the rise of a black messiah who sought to unify and electrify the black militant national so nationalist that's why movement. So that's why it hasn't been no other black leaders? Well, I, I can't tell think you what. That, that, that's on the same level of Martin, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. That's all you get to hear in, in, in the air. Who's, who, who's up there now? You want to say Jay Z? Yeah, he's no, up there. Yeah. That's an entertainer. Right. That's not, he's not for the cause for the people. He's no. helping the people. No. Yeah, in whatever ways he can do. But to solely live for the prosperity of your own people. There's no one out there. Can you name one? I can't. I can't. Anybody I can't. out there that can and name I'll one? Tell call you right why. now. Eight four four W A C E nine five three. And tell me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. I will tell you why. Why? Because look, I want to tell you who should have been the angriest black man in America. They scared. They scared. That's right. They scared. That's it. Scared. They scared. Come on, man. Look, Andrew Young was Martin Luther King Jr.'s best friend. He saw him murdered. He sat in on the autopsy to make sure that it was real. But as soon as they gave him some butter biscuits and said, shut up so we don't kill you, we'll make you, uh, 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 uh what was it, ambassador to the UN from the U.S. and give you a nice fat paycheck, but your ass better shut up. See, the program that Hoover insisted on, he insisted it should target figures as ideologically diverse as the black power activist Stokely Carmichael. Martin Luther King Jr. Stokely, by the way, never shut up. He got frustrated and left the country. 
Kwame Ture. And a nation of Islam leader Elijah Muhammad. Okay, just a few months later in 1968, who repented another memo warning of the urgent menace of a growing <laughs> black power movement. But this time the director focused on the unlikeliest of public enemies, black independent booksellers. Now why would he do that? Because black independent booksellers were selling books such as The Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. You didn't want black people reading that? American didn't want black people reading that? You know, Hoover ordered each bureau office to locate and identify black extremists and or African type bookstores in its territory and operate Separate discrete investigations on each to determine if it's extremist in nature. Well, anything pro-black to a racist white supremacist, especially a frogging at the mouth bigot like J. Edgar Hoover, the term black is beautiful was extreme. And like I said, the last thing they wanted was us educating the streets. They they are they they are uh, uh, yeah. so contradicting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. contradicting. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, one of the problems that I had... And what's that? Is what they teach at H HBCUs. Okay? HBCUs, of course, you know, they were modeled after... Ivy League white school. Okay. Okay. So their curriculum was made so that blacks could come to these schools, come to these HBCUs, and leave with an education where they could compete with their white counterparts in society. Okay. And I will tell you that many of these uh, educators, many of these HBCUs, did their job. Okay? The Great Debaters, one of the movies you often mention. Right. It showed these black students that were on a par intellectually with their white counterparts and even superior when it came to debating the issues because they were able to show themselves to defeat the views and, and, and opinions that were, were brought forth by their opponents who were white from the white Ivy League schools. Right. Now, my problem with HBCUs is their love for Greeks and Greek philosophers. Damn, the fraternities and sororities running around calling themselves Greeks. What's wrong with you black people running around calling yourselves Greeks? You ain't no damn Greek. See, the first European scholars were taught by Africans in Egypt. Again and again, the historical evidence has shattered widely held views that Europeans were the pioneers of early human civilization. In fact, there is corroborative evidence that half of humanity's recorded history had passed before anyone in Europe could even learn to read and write. We were building castles and palaces before Europeans started wearing shoes and could build a house with a window. And when they did build a, build a house with a window, they threw their waist out the damn window right on the sidewalk. Well, they got it now. Yeah. And they, they, they rearranging the world. Mm -hmm. So, what, where is it going from here? Where, well, where, what is the next move instead of this injection that they trying to give us? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what, it's, they have a plan. This is old. They got new plans that's in effect oh, right now. Yeah, but this is, mean, this is significant. This is significant, but it's it's part of the that talk two thousand pages. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, it, it's, you it's, know. So the yeah. thing is this, right? The thing, the reason why we must know our history. If you definitely. don't know your past, you, you won't know your future. Or you don't know where you're going to go. Or you don't know where you're going right. to go. See, you don't we, know know our going. we know our history for the mm -hmm. simple fact that our history shows us that 
we're treated unfair just like, you know, you was talking earlier when I was coming in out of the studio on the radio, you was talking about the banking system, Third World Bank. Third mm -hmm. World Bank was a bank that I had to sue. I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. And they treated my, it was a civil suit for all the black and Latino people through their bank because they really done the dirt to us. Mm hmm as you know, right. that's that's what's going on in America. Right. <laughs> I heard that. But you know what? Let us let us be clear on this. What? Okay. okay. History shows us that Egypt was truly the cradle of civilization. And that they groomed European scholars teaching the world the true essence of civilization. As a result, right. no thought or learning is alien to Africa. Which was the land such ideologies emanated from in the first place. And no amount of Eurocentric research can erase the historical contributions Egypt has bestowed upon the world. They try to do it, though. Yeah. Now, Socrates, who was uh, considered Europe's greatest mind, right? Okay. He was a, but a student in Egypt and a dropout at that. Now, oh, here's what's right. crazy. Wow. Yeah, yeah he was a dropout. He, he couldn't do it. Nah, he couldn't finish his lessons. It was too much for him. <laughs> So the little bit that they learned and took back to Europe right. changed the landscape of Europe. With that little bit. The With that little house. bit. Yeah. 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 But you got to remember that these were some ignorant people. And there ain't no other way to put it. So when these Greek philosophers who had not for centuries been allowed to study in Egypt were finally allowed to study in Egypt, right. when they came back, they scared the hell out of the Greeks. Okay. The Athenians said, whoa, wait a minute. Okay? Now let me tell you what happened to these Greek philosophers. Oh, yeah. Okay? Uh, uh, let's take uh, Anaxagoras. Right? Anaxagoras. 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 Yes, one of the Greek philosophers. The name of the crushing. Yeah, but he was imprisoned and killed by the Greeks. They, he got to talking that Egyptian stuff. <laughs> they was like, what the hell are you talking about? And they snatched him up and put him in prison. And then they sat around and said, what are we going to do with him? Somebody said, you know what? We're going to have to kill him. And that's what they did. Oh, wow. Oh, their greatest mind, Socrates, he was talking too deep and talking about what he learned in Egypt. <laughs> they said, you know what? We got to do something with him. They made him drink hemlock. That's poison. Mm. They made him execute his damn self. Boo! Yeah. <laughs> Plato, who was, I think, Socrates' uh, 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 protege, was sold into slavery. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you know what? Your ass a little too smart. We got something for you. We're going to work you to death. And that's the day. Sold him into slavery. Now, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, what? Who? Pythagoras? 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 I hope I'm saying that right. Pythor Pythagor Pythagoras. All right? Pythagoras was uh, the Greek philosopher that went into Egypt and learned math. He came back talking about A times B equals C squared and this, that. Pyth Pythagoras. I keep messing up his name. They killed, they said, you know what? One and three equals seven. <laughs> <laughs> the boy said that ain't right. They said kill him. They, they cut his head off. They uh, his head. This is what happened to the Greek philosophers, all right? <laughs> By the Greeks, they didn't want that wow. crap. They didn't want that understanding. I mean, the world is always like that. The world is never ready for change. Man. No, a, people no, get stuck not. in the same, you know, that same box and. You, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of the box, man. Yes, you do. That box of how you hemmed up. And, and, and one one track minded. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got to be able to see the 30, 60 degree circle. Isn't it? <laughs> it's hard nowadays, but it can be done. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. You know? And it's something that, of course, one of the problems that we deal with is the denial that these things are actually going on. You know, the Nile is a river in Egypt, not denial. Right. Okay. The river Nile. <laughs> yeah. You know, to imply that black folks are lying in a widespread way about racial injustice is in itself a kind of racism because it assumes that we can't be trusted 
to accurately be translators of our own experience. Like we're that dumb. Like we can't see what's going on. But that's that's how they got it written down. As a slave, you are that dumb. Yeah. You can't talk for yourself. That's right. You can't respond. You can't write sign a check. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's that's where they trying to keep that mentality at. Exactly. That's the only way that it exists. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when a target population is continued to criminalize and dehumanize in the media, this makes killing them appear as always justifiable. No, nah, like that, like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, you can, they they see an animal or a dog or something that's hurting his leg or hurting his crossing the street. Mm -hmm. They get out the car and go mm -hmm. help it. It's a poor little animal. Poor oh, thing. God. Oh, God, it's causing one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that same person will be pulled over by the police officer and you see them get killed by mm -hmm. cops when they should have been tased. Mm -hmm. And they have no emotion. Right. It's right. dead. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. Nothing. Now, it's, that's the worst. Yes. You know, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. that's where America has dumbed our people down to, down yep. to being numb mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. seeing our kind be dead in the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's it's right. like a movie. They yeah. want to see that. Oh, yeah. oh well, how, who gonna get killed? How many gonna get killed mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. you know, just look at the news. They look at the news now for a movie. Yeah, for entertainment. For, right, for right. Them, them racist, the all the racist groups and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They look at the news for uh, to get entertainment from yeah. to see which one of their buddies did what to who mm -hmm. that day because mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. all connected. That's crazy. That is. I mean, that is. But that's real talk. It's real. I mean, that's, that's real this talk. Is what, this is what's happening around us and mm -hmm. living in it. And one day that it can just be you. You you can just be that victim. Mm -hmm. Because and we have been dehumanized. Right. And Even their science attempts to dehumanize that's us. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Check this out. What? All right, a lot of people don't don't aren't aren't, aren't aware of this. What? But as late as the fifties, okay, in Europe and maybe even here. Right. All right, I gotta check the record on here. But in Europe, in Belgium, for instance, they would have black children at the zoo in their natural habitat on display. On display. Uh huh. I, I read that somewhere too, bro. That's sick that we are zoo animals to them. And then you wonder why they don't have a problem killing us. Because they have dehumanized us to the point where we they feel as though we don't deserve life. And the crazy on that is some of us feed into that. Some of us feed into that. Wow. You know, that's that's just sad, man. To be that brainwashed. Yeah. How brainwashed are you? Yo, call in and let me know. 844-WHGA-953. Come talk to us. What's happening? We talk to everybody. You dig? All right, all right. You too slow. I know. <laughs> yo, what's good? Yo, Vaughn. Hey, yo, this is the first break for me able to be able to shout my shout outs. Yo, Ray, what's happening? Yo, Ryan, I see you. Yo, where Bessie at? Hey, yo, hey, Bessie. Cheryl, what's up? Cedric, hey, yo, big ups. Yo, Eric, Nika, you know what I'm saying? Meese, what's good? Yo, Tommy. Dave, I'm shouting all y'all out. I thank y'all for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? We only growing and getting better. Yo, hit us up with some questions. Make us, you know, conversate with us. Put some feed through. You know, talk to us. You know what I'm saying? Interact. You know what I'm saying? Hit us up on the line. 844-WHCE-953. Ain't nothing. We talk about everything and everything. For real. <laughs> everything and everything. Everything and everything. You know what I mean? We ain't, yes, we ain't scared. We, that's the word. We ain't scared. We ain't scared. Break. Break. Uh, you know why we ain't scared? Why we ain't scared? One, we raise warriors. That's oh, most definitely. Two, we do our research. Most definitely. Don't come here, Stephanie. And three, we ain't backing down. No, no. We want to know the truth. Yeah, that's it. I ain't satisfied to just believe. Really. Right, right. I have a need to know. Exactly. You do too. Then you can't be lied to. That's what You know what I'm saying? 
WHTE 95.3 FM. Yeah, yeah. Right here in Wilmington, Delaware, the education advocacy station. I'm Patrice Gibbs. No shit wrong in the building. Right here, right here. You know, you heard me talk about this before. I want to bring the casual killing law. <laughs> okay. Now, the casual killing law. law. Okay. Does that apply to black people? Before you even go into it, the. Does it apply to black people or is it for black people? It applies to black people. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It comes casual to, killing law, y'all. Yo. This is the casual law. killing law. Yeah, yeah, now, this is crazy. Yeah. Now, you got to remember what? what was going on during slavery day. All right? And that was mm -hmm. these lazy ass white men who were living like potentates and what have you. Right. All right? Who were rapists and pedophiles. And they were going down to the slave quarters, raping the women and and, and little girls and what have right, you. Right. And they were having children right. by these slave women. Right. And they didn't they didn't have any parental responsibility right. or oh, feeling right. towards these children. Right. Okay, they were just more slaves. Right. Now, because these children were the product of white men and raped black women, right. they were light skinned. So they would bring these light-skinned children in the house. Right. Okay? So they did, you know, to some extent, have some feeling for them. You know, you know the old saying, don't you? If you're black, get back. If you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, it's mellow. Of course, if you're white, you're right. That's the old saying. Okay. So they bring these little light-skinned children in the house, and they would show them more favoritism than the other slaves. They were their children. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, they would beat and rape them in the New York Minute. If right, they, right. Right, right. And the thing was, their wives wasn't feeling this. Okay. So if a black child who was a slave, that's a little light-skinned child, dropped the egg, all right, his white wife would beat that child to death. Right. All right. This is where they, why they came up with the casual killing law. Oh, when this wow. was a law enacted during slavery to protect white women from criminal punishment for the death of slaves while correcting them. For minor infractions, from by beating them to death by mistake. Yeah, yeah. How <laughs> you beat somebody to death accidentally? Oh my God! You know, I meant to put a whooping on you, but I didn't mean to kill you. Yeah, I'm a, okay. oh, man. You know, upon deeper research, it was discovered that the law was actually created, like I said, for white women in particular, because of the ever increasing amount of slaves dying under her watch. Right. Upon even deeper investigation, it was revealed that it was a small black children that white women were murdering in record numbers. Small black children in record numbers wow. during the course of correcting them. Wow, man. White women were the greatest antagonizers, aggressors, and, abu and abusers of black children during slavery and responsible for the majority of their deaths to the point that a law had to be created to protect white women for punishment for her own damn crime. And then we wonder why Karen got so much damn attitude. Karen got now, so much... You got to think about that. Mm -hmm. They came up with a law to save them from the murder charge. Right. That's, what, that's what's happening. Yeah. That's what has happened. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And that's, that's, that's probably still in existence right now. It's still a law right now to this day. What? Now, why, why this? hasn't that been... That's what I mean. Why hasn't these kind of laws been attacked by these new found people that's coming into the, this new government every four years that they're supposed to have? I mean, mm -hmm. these... That's where I'm at. That's what I want. I'm directed at trying to... Uh, Accomplish and get yeah, taken out and change. You know right. what I'm saying? That's, we 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 know all this information and mm -hmm. we we pass it on to our our constituents. But mm -hmm. it, it it it's like we I want to take it another uh, jump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And inside of when we telling them this, we can say, look, call this person and say, mm -hmm. yo, boom, boom, we want this article out. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's listening to us, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. put put uh, a force behind 
the things that need to be done through this radio. Mm -hmm. We can do it through our voice too. You know what I'm saying? By having the right information for people to write this particular person or whatever and let them know that this is a bill, a bill that, you know, mm -hmm. needs to be taken off. Or, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I you know, know what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. Because you think about this, right? What? Now, and you heard me talk about this before, but we've seen pictures of nature. And there's one picture that I'm talking about in particular of a little white girl, no more than 10 or 12 years old, watching a black man being lynched, and she has a smirk on her face. And right, and she was what? Four years old. No, no, she might have been 10. 10. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 10. Mm -hmm. Now she's 80. Whose raggedy ass grandmother is that? No, what judge is she? Uh, do you know? No, it's what judge is she? That's what? go to. They be judges for a long time. Oh yeah, and that's oh, what I'm saying. Man. So that when you, and uh, now that that particular judge mm -hmm. is the head of all these people's lives that's coming through there. She that's can make right. A decision to go. Okay, you getting twenty years. You getting thirty years, and this is the same person that was smirking at a, a person being hung. Very it doesn't even have to be a black man. Just a person. It's a person that's being hung. That's you know what I'm saying. That's what. And when you said we judge. I got a judge's name right here. Wait a minute. Wait a second. I got a look, husband right here. Digging. Is that oh, her? Oh, yeah. 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 See, we got to do the research and uh -huh. get that picture and like blue pop. But, oh, yo, she, she ain't supposed to be a judge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You was participating with this back then. People need to vote her out. You That's what, what they saying? need to do. That's, I mean, wh whoever it is. Yep. The you punishment know? have to come back to you somehow. Donna you know Scott Davenport. Donna Scott Davenport. And middle... Tennessee State University. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, where is she? She's in Tennessee. Okay. Okay. But um, she having eight-year-old kids arrested. Having them arrested and accused them of not stopping a scuffle. You got eight-year-old immature kids watching a fight, and she called, she had the cops go arrest these Yaga. children for not stopping a fight. Get at it. See, you got to figure, remember who these people come from. Right. They come from those wealthy, powerful people. Okay? And these same people are engaging in wide-scale crimes from human sex trafficking to rigging college admissions to fleecing taxpayers while most of the court system is focused on policing and jailing people for the crime of being black and poor. This is the open eye. I'm no so wrong. I'm Patrice Gibbs. And as we always tell you, destiny determines who enters your life, but you decide who stays. Therefore, value those who value you. And don't treat those as a priority who treat you as an option. No so wrong. Thank y'all for tuning in. You did. Yaga! <sighs> mm -mm. Excuse me, y'all. It's a slow motion, man. Yeah, live radio. Yo, what's good? Hey, yo, that hour go by quick. Uh, well, my, my 43 minutes go by quick because I'll I be late a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I be having so much, y'all don't know what I be doing, though. Hey, yo, Pat, talk to your people. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank Respect you, to you, Sister Tracy. That's the word. Hey, hey, hey. I, I see everybody on there that came in with no seroma. Hey, Tommy, what's up? What's up, David? Yes, D. I hope you learned something, and I hope you pass it on. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, peace. Word, link up. Hell yeah, go get that. No so long, sir.